just had a great conversation with a mentor a few days ago, and she reminded me that following our passions in our work, if we are lucky enough to do so, can really make our careers much more satisfying. Um, not everyone is possible is, is able to merge their passion with a career, but for those of us who can, or at least seek the opportunity to try, it makes our working life um, much more satisfying because it fulfills something that our hearts need. I came around to sustainability um, both through my upbringing. I had a grandmother who um, loved being outdoors and loved um, um, found sustainability really important. She wouldn't have used the word sustainability like she was born in 1925, right? So it's a different a different time. She had different language for it, but she um, abhorred waste. She didn't want to see things wasted. She wanted resources used well. And so that was instilled in me at a young age. And so I think I've been sort of coming through my career path to this job that I have now, my passion for learning, my passion for sharing learning with youth, um, offering learning experiences, my care about sustainability. I'm really proud to work at a utility um, that offers um, mostly clean energy. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do um, for my career um, after high school. Uh, so I went to a four-year college. Um, I had the support of my family to do that. And while I was there, I got um, interested in the sciences as my major. Although I feel really um, lucky that I went to a liberal arts college. So in addition to majoring in chemistry, I got to take studio art and theology, and I studied a foreign language. Um, so I got to do a variety of things besides just be in the science building, studying chemistry and related sciences. Um, and then I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do um, as I was graduating from my four-year college. I would I had learned at that point, you know, it's interesting. I did some lab work as part of my chemistry major, and it became clear to me that I did not want to be a laboratory chemist, but I really still enjoyed the science. I enjoyed learning it. And so I leaned into um, the idea of being a teacher. I had been a camp counselor for a number of summers, and I had been a leader in training with Girl Scouts, so I had experience working with youth. So I thought maybe being a teacher would be the right fit for me. Um, and I was able to go into a um, teacher apprenticeship program that was through AmeriCorps and through um, another program that allowed me to be in the classroom and teaching science to middle school students at the same time that I was learning how to be a teacher. So I had a lot of support from a mentor teacher and from administrators. And I was a middle school science teacher for a couple of years. This is the story I like to tell. So I was enjoying being a middle school science teacher and I would take my students on field trips and I would realize anytime I went on a field trip, what I really wanted to do was actually be the educator that was at the field trip site. They were at a park or at a like solar powered house or at a museum. And I kept thinking that educator like was really doing what I wanted to do. So I left the classroom after three years and I became what, you know, we call a non-formal environmental educator. Um, and I've done work in that space ever since. So that's almost 20 years at this point. I went and got my master's degree as well in environmental studies with a focus on environmental education. Um, and during that time, um, the luxury of school, especially graduate school, especially if you work for a while first and then go to the graduate school that you really know is the like topic you really want to like spend time on, um, is the chance to do some deep thinking about why you want to do what you do. Understanding place through conversation, observation, and creation. And that just to be aware of the place around us, to know where we are and where we are is the history and the systems and the energy and the matter and the resources and the people and the culture. Um, and just like, as well as the animals and the plants and the land and the water, it's like all those things make up a place. So, um, and I think I really get to do that now in my current work, help people understand our place. My favorite part about my job is that I get to learn and discover all the amazing things that we do at the utility. There are always new things that I'm learning um, because our utility includes um, power, so electricity, hydropower, um, drinking water um, coming from a surface, mostly from a surface source, 
and then also a short line railroad, which helps move um, freight uh, in and out of the port of Tacoma. So there's just so much going on and so much for me to learn. Uh, and then the second joy is then sharing the excitement of my learning with the youth that I get to meet in the community or helping my colleagues um, share what they do with the youth that we get to work with. At my college, there was a program called Externship, and it was a one-week job shadow that was held over one of the breaks. Um, but I got to choose uh, an alum from my college to shadow, job shadow for a week. Um, and I was lucky that there are alumni from my college who um, are willing to do that, to host students who um, want to job shadow. And so I job shadowed a middle school science teacher in New York City, and then three years later became a middle school teacher, a science teacher in New York City um, at a different school, but you know, um, still seeing what he did every day, understanding what he was trying to accomplish with his students. That's, I think, sort of like planted the idea like, oh, that is something I can do. And since I wasn't totally sure, but I knew I liked kids and I liked science, I was like, well, let me try this first, right? I have this opportunity. So that externship, that job shadow experience was really important. I would say to try to get the experiences that you can now in um, or adjacent to the field. Um, and you can come at this field from a number of different angles, whether that's education, like I did being a teacher, being a camp counselor, or whether you want to start with resource conservation first um, and or wildlife and habitat conservation and sort of learn that side of it and then learn the people side and learn the education side. Um, it's a it's a complex field, and I think you need to start with one side or the other, and then, um, or you can start with one side or the other. There are also just um, for environmental educators, there are also a lot of seasonal jobs. Um, a lot of entry level positions are either just for the summer, or just for the school year for outdoor school type programs, um, and it can be um, difficult and demoralizing at first to have to knit together seasonal jobs like that to know that you're only employed for a summer and then you're looking around and trying to get employed for a school year and then you're trying to get employed for a summer again. Um, so that's a warning that that is one path into this field um, and it can be tough, um, but a lot of people do find it rewarding. The other thing that was really important was that I spent a summer doing lab research for one of my professors. That is a common experience for science majors to get the chance to do research in a laboratory um, or in the field for, um, for ecological and biological sciences. And that taught me a really important lesson that I don't want to do that as my full-time job. I did not enjoy it, right? I was indoors when I wanted to be outside. And it was interesting to pursue questions, but it was kind of finicky in a way that I wasn't interested in doing all the time. And so I think it's just as important to try on jobs and have these sort of like career experiences, shadows or internships, and find out that that's not what you want to do. That's as valuable as finding out what it what you do want to do.